some of you remarked that uh, you like my tie and I was dressed up this morning. Well, it's, it's out of respect, to be honest. Um, we are in a, a state of mourning at the moment, and we're uh, remembering a, a somebody who has been a part of all of our lives for most of our lives. I think the oldest person here was five when she took the throne. Imagine that. Yeah, but you're not the oldest. <laughs> no, it just feels like it, Mum. <laughs> this week we lost the most shining example of duty and respect and loyalty that I think I personally have ever known. We were blessed as a nation and as a commonwealth to have her as our monarch, but we were richly blessed to have her for so long. She was famous for her first speech, and I'm sure many of you have seen it if you've been on Facebook, in, uh, when she was 21, before she ever became queen. She said, I declare before you all that my whole life, whether it be long or short, shall be devoted to your service and the service of our great imperial family to which we all belong. And God gave her a long life, and she fulfilled that promise. I believe every day of it. The Queen gave a yearly Christmas speech. It became part of Britain's tradition to tune in and, and hear her each Christmas day. Her first Christmas speech was in 1957, when she said, I cannot lead you into battle. I do not give you laws or administer justice, but I can do something else. I can give you my heart and my devotion to these old islands and to all the peoples of our brotherhood of nations. And again, I believe she fulfilled that. The queen was like anyone else in many respects and had opinions on everything. When she knighted David Attenborough in 2006, she said to this to him about football. Football is a difficult business. And aren't they prima donnas? But it's a wonderful game. <laughs> that was her opinion on football. And I think it reflected many of us, to be honest. The Queen also had a sense of humor. She was uh, doing an interview with a reporter when she was just a child. And the reporter said, what do you want to be when you grow up? And she said, I want to be a horse. <laughs> on the celebration of, of her and Philip's silver wedding anniversary, she said, if I am asked today what I think about family life after 25 years of marriage, I can answer with equal simplicity and conviction, I am for it. But the queen also had a motto. She was known for this. She, in fact, it was famous. And her motto was, you have to be seen to be believed. In other words, and this is what she's quoted as saying, now that's more about getting out there and doing the job, not just talking about it, but it does also lend itself to being seen literally by wearing bright clothes. And so even her clothes reflected her motto in life. You have to be seen to be believed. And, that has been, and as has been proved, Time again, things change. We now have a new king, Charles III. And while we'll never have another monarch like Elizabeth, we will carry on. It is times like this that I am reminded of how amazing it is to serve and worship a king who will never die, who will never abdicate, and he'll never be replaced. We serve the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And to be honest, I think Elizabeth did as well. Our message today that I'm going to be sharing with you reflects in many aspects the Queen's motto. She spoke often of her faith, and those closest to her have testified as to how important that was. Listen to these quotes about her, or that she said, excuse me. She said, Each day is a new beginning. I know that the only way to live my life 
is to try to do what is right, to take the long view, to give of my best in all that the day brings, and to put my trust in God. She said, I know just how much I rely on my own faith to guide me through the good times and the bad. And finally, she said, if we resolve to, cons to be considerate and to help our neighbors, to make friends with people of different races and religions, and as our Lord said, to look to our own faults before we criticize others, we will be keeping faith with those who landed in Normandy and fought so doggedly for their belief in freedom, peace, and human decency. I'm going to suggest to you this morning that before we start our worship of the King of Kings, that we conclude this time with two minutes of silence to remember our Queen. So let's stand together and quietly ponder her passing. Matt, would you come and open our service in prayer? Oh, Father, how strange the times are. In the past few years, we've seen COVID. We've seen uh, the war in uh, the Ukraine. And now the Queen has died. And these are monumental events. And uh, all around us, things seem to change moment by moment. But we thank you that you are steadfast. We thank you that you are unchanging in your beauty, in your greatness, in your character. We thank you that you are a rock we can stand on during uncertain times. And Father, we thank you for... Queen Elizabeth II, we thank you for the life you gave her. We thank you for the example she set. We thank you for the faith that she had. And Father, we pray over these next few days, weeks and months, as we remember the Queen and her life lived, and particularly her, her speech as she gave at Christmas time, that Father, people would see into the life of Queen Elizabeth II, her faith in you. That, Father, people would want to know more about the Lord Jesus Christ, whom she served. And that, Father, people would be drawn to come to churches up and down England to find out more. And that, Father, they too would submit to the king that she submitted to. That they too would trust in the king she trusted in. That they too would follow the one who never dies 
that will live forever and ever, and the one we worship this morning. Father, we pray as we sing now that you'd help us to look to the one who has conquered death, conquered sin, conquered our enemy, Satan and his demons, Mm. and the one who will return for us one day and take us to be with him. Thank you for Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now, don't sit down. We're going to change gears now, and we're going to we're going to start our worship with a bit of an upbeat song. You kids like this song. You may even feel like clapping your hands or moving your feet. That's perfectly fine. All right. So we're going to sing "King of Kings" and "Lord of Lords." <laughs> 